Okay, in the previous video, we just discussed the central limit theorem and we presented the definition. And now we are going to see uh, how we can use the central limit theorem and what is the normal approximation based on that theorem. So let x1 until xn be a sequence of an iid random variables with common mean and common variance. It's the same setup that we have discussed previously. We have that for large sample size n. The sample mean will be approximately distributed normal with mean mu. Remember that this mu is the expected value of the random variables and the variance is going to be sigma square over n. Okay. So this mu here is the expected value of xi of the, uh, and it's actually the expected value of the sample mean. And the variance, this variance here, is the variance of the sample mean. That is actually the variance of the random variables over n. Okay, but the thing here is what is large n? What counts as large n? A typical rule of thumb is that n should be at least 20 to 30. Okay, that is something that we consider large, but it's something that will depend on the contents, will depend on the problem that we are analyzing. But some people consider 30 as uh, large, more than 30. Okay. The farther the population distribution is from the normal distribution, especially if it is if it isn't symmetric, symmetric, the larger n must be for the CLT to kick in. Okay, in case we are not in the case of normal distribution, we will need a larger n value to apply the CLT. But on the other hand, if the underlying population and uh, distribution is normal. The distribution of the sample mean is exactly normal for any n. So if we know that the distribution that all, uh, the distribution of the population is normal, then uh, we will have that our sample mean is also normal for any n. Let's see some examples on how we can use this. In lesson 4.1, we saw a demonstration where we simulated rolling a fair seed sided die over and over uh, and we consider running average at n the sample mean the law of large numbers the LLN tell us that this sample mean converges to 3.5 as n goes to infinity right we had something like this and remember here we have uh, the sample size and uh, here we had the sample mean uh, we saw that if we have an experiment and uh, let's say we are here in 3.5 here is three four seeds and this is one for example we could have a, a run of something like this we'll start here and as n is large this converges to the sample mean to the expected average the theoretical value that is three 0.5, right? Uh, applying the CLT in this case, we have that the sample mean at Zen is approximately normal with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square over n, right? This is the CLT. But in this particular case of rolling a dice, we have that mu is equal to the expected value of x, that is 3.5, the theoretical value, 3.5, right? And sigma square, that is the variance of x, uh, in this case, is, we can use this formula, as the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared, right? That is the definition for the variance. And we have that the expected value of x squared, we can calculate it, is 1 squared times the probability that is 1 over seeds plus a 2 squared times 1 over seeds and so on. This is going seeds squared times 1 over seeds. 
and minus the, the square of the expected value that is 3.5 square. If we calculate this, this is approximately 2.92. So applying the CLT in this case it means that Xn is going to be normal, normally distributed with mean equal to 3.5 and the variance will depend on n and it's going to be 2.92 approximately 2.92 uh, over n, right? So that means if we are, for example, in n equal to 4, let's say we are here, in n equal to 4, the, if we take the mean, it's going to be, sorry, the distribution of this sample, um, of the sample mean is going to be normal, and the mean is going to be 3.5 and the variance is 2.92 over n. So the distribution in n equal to 4 should be something like this. And as n is large, the variance is going to be smaller. So for example, if we, had, if we take a value over here, the distribution of the sample mean with this n is going to be something like this with a smaller variance and so on. If we take an n value over here, the distribution should be something like this. And this is the uh, central limit theorem. Let's see this another sample. Uh, let x to be the sample, the mean of a random sample of size 25 from the uniform uh, from 0 to 10 distribution. Okay, That is, we have 25 observation, it's 1 and it's 25 observations iid independent and identically distributed uniform 0 10 random variables and we consider its bar uh, is their average we have to find this probability the probability that its is between 5 and 5 2. okay this is asking just for its not the sample mean right so how we can do that in the uniform case remember we can use the geometric a technique to calculate this probability we have that x is between 0 and 10 so the height is going to be 1 over 10 because this uh, the area of this rectangle should should be 1 something we already did in the past so if we have 10 over here this height should be 1 over 10 okay now we have to find the probability that the x is between 0 is between 5 and 5.2 so if we have 5 over here and 5.2 they are asking what is this area between 5 and 5.2 so the probability that it's the random variable not the sample mean is between 5 and 5.2 this is something we already did in the past is and uh, it's basically 0 0.2 that is the difference between 5 and 5.2 times the height that is 1 over 10. This is equal to 0 0.02. Okay, but what is the approximate distribution of X bar? And we have to provide the name and parameters. Okay, by CLT, remember that the central limit theorem says that X bar, the sample mean, is normally distributed the mean is going to be the expected value of the random variable and the variance is going to be the variance of the random variable over n. Here, the expected value of x is a plus b over 2 because it's the expected value of the random variable that is uniform, is 0, 10, that is 10 over 2, and this is going to be 5. Okay, now the variance of the random variable is a b minus a square over 12. This is 10 square over 12. This is 25 over 3. So with this, using the CLT, we have that um, the sample mean in this case is normally distributed asymptotically uh, that means with n when n is large 
with mean equal to 5 and the variance is equal to uh, the variance of x that is 25 over 3 over n but n in this case is 25 so this is equal to n this is our sample size so over 25 that means the variance is going to be 1 over 3 okay now we have to approximate the probability that our sample mean so this is different than a because in a we are asking about to calculate the probability over the random variable but now we are asking about the sample mean so what is the probability that the sample mean is between 5 and 5.2 we have to provide a final numerical answer so we can do that uh, using an applet but let's say since we have that the random uh, sorry that the uh, sample mean is normally distributed to calculate this the probability of 5 less or equal than uh, the sample mean 25 is between 5 and 5.2 we can use the applet with mean equal to 5 so that means mu is equal to 5 and the variance equal to 1 over 1 over 3 that is uh, the if the variance is 1 over 3 the standard deviation is the square root of that and it's approximately 0.57735 right so we can use the applet with mu equal to 5 and sigma equal to 0 0.57735 right and this is approximately 0 0.1325 okay you can do that or end your round to compute that okay now the final example we have this let's revisit our example 4 from lesson 4.1 we poll n voters and let its side to be one if the voter supports a particular candidate and zero if not. The voters are randomly selected from a population where the true probability of supporting the candidate is p. Okay. So we model its side to be Bernoulli with parameter p, something that we already did. And we use its n bar to be an estimator of p. How many people should we poll to be at least 95% confident our estimate of p is off by less than 0 0.1? Okay. In other words, what n values ensure that this probability, the probability that this difference is less than 0 0.1, is greater or equal than 0 0.95? We previously, it's something that we did in, in the previous uh, a lesson you probably use Chebyshev's inequality and thought that this would be satisfied for n greater or equal than 500. Now we'll refine this number uh, using the CLT and recall that this variance is less or equal than 1 over 4n. Okay, now but by CLT again, just to remember, the sample mean is approximately normally distributed with mean equal to the expected value of the random variable of the random variables and the variance is going to be the variance of the random variable over n in the case of the Bernoulli scenario we have that the expected value is equal to p and we have that the variance of the random variables over n is going to be p times 1 minus p over n and we have that this is less or equal than 1 over 4n, right? Okay, let's use the CLT. We have to find this probability, the probability that it's n minus p is less, is less than 0 0.1, right? We, we want to find an upper bound for that. Okay, this is equal to the probability that solving the absolute value this is the probability that um it's n sorry with the without the absolute value it's n minus p is greater 
than minus 0, 0 0.1 and less than 0 0.1. It's between 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. If we solve for its n, so summing p in all the sides, it's going to be this, right? And if we standardize here in this step, we standardize to have a normal a standard distribution, normal standard. Remember that is uh, this standardization is this minus two point one plus p. Uh, we subtract the expected value on all the sides. So let's say expected value of edge. This is less than its n minus the expected value of edge. But we also divide by um, the standard, sorry, by the um, square root of the variance over n, right? And this is what we call this just to remember, we uh, already did that. This is our C random variable. This is the standardization. So uh, doing the same in both sides, this is 0 0.1 plus P minus the expected value. This over the square root of the variance of S over N. Mm. Over N. Okay. So we have that the expected value is p and the variance is this. So uh, at the end we have that this is the probability that minus 0 0.1 plus p minus p over um, the square root of p times 1 minus p over n, that is the variance, just replacing the value of the variance and the expected value. Here we have the zeta, the z the c and random variable and in this side we replace and this is 0 0.1 plus p minus p over the square root of p times 1 minus p over n okay here we cancel out this this plus p minus p this is zero so this is zero um, and here we are using that this inequality p times 1 minus p over n is less or equal than 1 over 4n. This is given. And we will have that this probability is the same as the probability that, uh, sorry, this is greater or equal using the inequality because we are replacing this bar, this denominator is minus 0 0.1 over uh, the square root of 1 over 4n. This is less than c and less than 0 0.1 square root of 1 over 4 okay and doing some algebra here this is the same that the probability of minus 0 0.1 times 2 the square root of n is less than c less than 0 0.1 times uh, 2 square root of n okay and finally, if we want this to be greater or equal than 0 0.95. So we want to know what should be the value of these two terms here, or at least one of them, because this is the negative part of this. Uh, we want to know what should be this term to be greater or equal than 0 0.95. And we have something, recall that we have something that we call the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule. We can apply that here because if we have the standard the standard normal distribution that is uh, centering zero, and uh, we have one standard deviation, two and three, minus one, minus two, minus three. We have that uh, the area between two standard deviations, that is in the, in the case of the standard distribution is the standard normal distribution is this area. This area is 95%. So 
this um, this number over here should be equal to 2 and this one should be equal to minus 2 so we can uh, check this uh, check that the area between I mean the, this probability is 0 0.95 so that means that 0 0.1 times 2 square root of n should be greater or equal than 2 and if we solve this we get that n should be greater or equal than 100 and that's it